liquids, solids, and intermolecular forces, chapter 11. Let's start off with a video. I like this picture. Um, so this is a guy on the, the space station, and that is water without gravity, just making a big old blob. And I, I think it's cool how they framed the picture. It's got his face upside down in the middle of it. So let's see what this video is. Can you drink water with no gravity? Yes, yeah. you can. You can because it's it's your mouth. Your mouth is and your your esophagus push the water down. Okay. Yeah. But getting it in. But getting it in, yeah. I mean, you can't just pour it out of a cup. You'd have to drink it through a straw, or go up to the blob floating in the air and go and suck it in or something. I mean, you, you think about. All the things we take for granted. It's, but it's, how are our body fluids work like inside of us? Your That's a good question. How would your body fluids work? In fact, um, one of the reasons that we have people on the space stations and they're doing studies about how the absence of gravity affects your body, and it can it can pretty pretty much mess up your muscle tone and stuff, and so they have to do particular things to um, to maintain their health on the space station. So this, this video is kind of interesting. The question is, if you get a clot dripping wet without gravity and you wring it out, what's going to happen? What will happen to a run out clot? So, and I had to use equipment that was here on board the space station. We might have the coolest washcloths ever here on the space station. I'm going to show you. Here's one of our washcloths. And it's packed it. It's put down into this little tiny hockey puck so that uh, it saves space. But when you open up a hockey puck <laughs> and you pull out your washcloth, this is the one I'm going to use for the experiment today. And so when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm going to get this soaking wet, and then we're going to see what will happen when we wring it out. You can't even get it wet. Mary Thu Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space. So instead, I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start wringing it up. It's really wet. It stays still. It stays still. It's becoming a tube of water. The water's all over my hands. In fact, it rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. Okay, so the experiment worked like beautifully. Sodium. And the answer to the question is, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension of the water, it, um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands or gel on your hand and it'll just stay there wonderful moisturizer on my hands <laughs> and the cloth doesn't really unravel itself it just stays there floating like a uh, like a dog's chew toy soaking wet great experiment worked perfectly Meredith and Kendra congratulations great idea
Yeah, you know those Canadians. <laughs> so what do you guys think of that? It's kind of interesting, huh? Would, Question? Would, would, would water drop Yeah, so it, it brings up a lot of questions, right? So what does happen with the water when you drink it? Does it go down? Um, oh, there's my stylus. Um, what happens to those loose particles that just go floating off into space? Um, well, they're, they're just going to, like, you know, <laughs> float around until they hit something. And you saw how when he wrung the, the cloth out, the water just traveled along his hands. So what do you think would happen if a little floating droplet of water came and maybe contacted your face? What would it do? Would it bounce off? No, it would stick, right? So why does water do that? So we're going to talk about why water molecules stick together in this chapter. It has to do with the polar molecules, yeah. So intermolecular forces. Inter is a prefix that means between. So these are forces that occur between molecules. We just spent a long time talking about chemical bonds. This is not chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are within a molecule. These are between atoms or between molecules. And these forces exist between all atoms and molecules. They are significant only at very short distances. They are responsible for the very existence of all solids and liquids. Without intermolecular forces, everything would be a gas. And so they're essential for physiological processes. What state a sample of matter is in depends on the relative strength of the intermolecular forces compared to the amount of thermal energy that that substance has. So the reason that water is a liquid at room temperature has to do with how strong the intermolecular forces are holding it together at, compared to the thermal energy, which is related to the temperature of the water. 